Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the trees have to start coming into the cold frame. The cold frame is ready and the temperatures are dropping so the trees are ready to come on inside. So we have a couple of lights that are now off because they're on timers and as of about 6 o'clock p.m. no more light because it's starting to get dark around 6 or so and then next week daylight savings time it's going to start getting dark around 5, 5.30 already and then it just goes down there, downhill from there in Minnesota. So the lights are off, they're on timers. We've got our GoV thermometers. So I use GoV thermometers. Uh, it's a product that I've used uh, for the last couple of years. I have a GoV for the Garage High, GH. I have a GoV Low down there for Garage Low, G GL for Garage Low. So when I look at my phone app, I can see uh, what the temperature is like at the top part of the uh, cold frame and the bottom part of the cold frame. I've got some uh, cheap uh, boot trays for out here. I wish they were about uh, six inches wider. The length is pretty good, but we'll still get, still get plenty of trees in here and uh, we can work on angling these and actually putting in more than just uh, a couple on top. So you can always make adjustments based on your space. Um, if we get just a little bit of an angle there, we might be able to get three in here. We'll work with that as we get our trees in here. Sometimes you might have to buy smaller boot trays and then put them this way and you can run them side by side. That's just a little bit long, it sticks out, uh, that's not going to fit. So you make it work. The uh, thermostat regu regulated heat source is plugged in, hanging up right here in the middle of the cold frame. I might lower that. Um, we'll see how the temperature moderates in here. And then we've got this shelf right here, wide open over here for the big trees. So now uh, we have to go get the trees outside. But before I grab the trees, I'm going to make sure that everything's all connected here the way I want. And while I do that, let's take a peek at me taking care of the trees uh, before I'm going to bring them in now. So earlier this evening, I went in and did some insecticidal soap and sprayed all of the uh, trees. So uh, with the insecticidal soap, you're going to be able to uh, kill any bugs that might still be remaining. We have not had a really hard freeze yet. A couple of nights with frost on the ground. Most of the bugs are probably gone and done and it, it's going to be uh, probably just an extra precaution in this case, but uh, we went ahead and sprayed uh, the trees. So I went ahead and got my uh, uh, two and a half to three teaspoons, uh, or three, two and a half to three ounces rather, of the insecticidal soap into a gallon of water and just sprayed the trees really heavily up, top, bottom, side, right, left, uh, from below, over the top. And then um, about a half an hour later, after they had sat there and kind of did their thing, then I um, sprayed them with the hose, uh, the garden hose, got that out, and gave them a good spray. Now that the trees are all sprayed, we've got the insecticidal soap that hopefully took care of all the bugs and we got the uh, garden hose and sprayed them all off. It's time to bring them in here and see where they're all gonna fit. This will be the first attempt. So I'll be back with some trees. So my first tree is the spruce and I wanna see if I can get it in there and not do too much damage to it. So it's wide, it's tall, and uh, we want to make sure it does good things over the winter. The reason why I'm putting in my spruce tree from the bogs from just two uh, weekends ago is I want to make sure that the stress of a cold winter doesn't do any harm to this uh, tree that was dug out and uprooted from the bogs. So it looks like it's fitting in there quite nicely. I might be able to turn it around to face the back side. Let's try that for the, uh, la the, la the right side here. Nope. I don't think that's going to work. We're going to go with our first instinct here and put it back right here. I'm going to make sure all the branches are flexible enough so when I close this door they won't be damaged. That looks like it's gonna work. 
So I got the spruce, it comes right up to the tippy top, and I might even be able to get a couple of trees back there on the lower right side on top of that um, Anderson flat. We can put another tree or two in there. And then the heater is next to that, but the base of the tree is far away. The early branches are a good uh, six to 12 inches of any heat source. So hopefully these branches won't dry out. If I need to, I could also pull these up maybe with some rope, some string. I could uh, lean these up here so they don't get uh, as much exposure to that dry air. Let's go get some more trees. So I have right here my Chinese elm. Uh, and it's uh, dropping lots of its leaves now with the cold weather. It changed color a little bit, starting to drop. I have a juniper here that could stay outside, but I have it in a Sarah Rainer pot, and I've always kept this one inside in a cold frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably leave that in here as well. So this is one of those trees where I'm gonna have to do some uh, finagling to make sure I get it high off the ground. So in most of my uh, cold frame storage areas, I always have blocks so I can get this where it needs to be. So if I put this all the way over here, stick it towards the back, and have it on these block systems here, then it won't be uh, damaged on the ground there. And then if I go ahead and chuck this one back here, we've got two trees back there that are uh, tucked in real nice. And this light right here is gonna be right there on it. We'll just move that a little bit. There we go, time for some more trees. So after I get a sense of how many trees will be in here, we'll see where we can reposition them. And of course, I always have the uh, cabin cold frame, but we're starting in here in the garage. And this is uh, one of my Japanese maple. I got a couple more to go grab. And this is uh, my Japanese quince. Um, so uh, we'll see uh, how those do and let's get some more trees. One of my Japanese maples. This is a Japanese maple that uh, I did trim back just a little bit ago. And I'm gonna put that up in here. Time for some more. I have my Satsuki Azalea, which has some massive growth on this side and a whole bunch of little uh, ramification up here. It'll be fun to see what this one does this year. If you look back at my polar vortex from last year, this was the uh, tree I was the most concerned about. When the polar vortex hit for two weeks, the cold frame, the cabin one lost power. I thought this one might be the most uh, damaged one from there, but it's come back really uh, well this year. We cut all the flower blooms off to keep all the energy into the branches and everything's really well. Uh, again, uh, and this is another uh, a Japanese maple. Uh, one of my really fun curved ones, got some nice movement to it but I've got some critter damage down here. So the critters came after this one, but it's already starting to heal over. We'll see what that one does in time. Let's go get a couple more trees. Another Japanese maple doesn't quite fit. I've got my Kishu Shimpaku that's been recently trimmed at the Peter T workshop. But if I put that down here and I put this down here, I have the main first batch of trees in here that I thought I would keep. But I have to check something real quick. I'll be right back. Ah, the trident maple. Yeah, let's see where that's gonna go. It looks like it fits underneath here just fine. I still need another boot tray down there, otherwise water's gonna pool down there. But my trident maple is gonna fit down there. That looks really good. It might even fit up here. It might even fit up here. So uh, we can maneuver some things around just to see how things are going. So one thing to keep in mind, the uh, broadleaf evergreens are gonna keep their leaves. Uh, the uh, Chinese elm might keep some leaves now, the rest of the indoors here. We've got the uh, Japanese maples with a couple of pretty leaves left on here. Those we're probably gonna cut off here. Um, we're gonna trim off those leaves, the foliage on the quince we can cut off. 
Well, that, those leaves might stay in there for a while longer. I'm going to also cut off the leaves from this uh, Japanese maple. So we don't want a lot of foliage to stick on and then fall off in the cold frame and create any possible mold down at the base of the uh, trunk and then, uh, at the soil level. So generally, if it's not a broadleaf evergreen or these, of course, uh, conifers, we're going to get rid of the deciduous leaves, okay? So we're going to cut all those out. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just see how everything fits and we'll get at that task uh, uh, next time because I want to see what trees I have left, what might go down to the uh, cabin coal frame, and then when we're all ready and we know where things are going to go, I'll definitely uh, make sure I cut these, uh, uh, these leaves off right here. Uh, some of them are just going to lightly fall off right here. I can do this tree right now, and that one has been defoliated. So one thing to keep in mind too, when you've got a cold frame, if your first one is small, don't worry about it, um, but make sure you have good access to your cold frame. So this cold frame is new, it's over twice as high, it's wider, it's deeper, and I'm gonna have really good access to these trees to water these this year, down here, over here. I've got a lot of space in here. Um, and I can move things around again, get wider boot trays, some other uh, containers, um, to hopefully house some more trees. I can twist things around, turn things around, but you want to have good access. If you don't have good access to your trees, you're going to have a tough time watering them. And so you want to make sure you get that squirt bottle. I'm also going to fill this whole uh, cold frame with some of my uh, bottles. So let me grab a couple of those and I'll tell you what I mean. So here are a couple of my recycled juice canisters, uh, my juice bottles that I use as my watering can. Now on most of the bottles, I leave uh, closed. I don't drill any holes in there. And uh, I put these all throughout the uh, cold frame. They can sit anywhere in here. And when the more water you have in your cold frame, the more it helps to regulate the heat in the cold frame. And then you have water that's room temperature to the plants. So when you water them, they won't feel shocked. You won't have super cold water on, on warmer roots. Uh, the other thing you could do, of course, is have warmer water and warm them up a bit. But again, we don't want, we don't want to put a lot of instant shock to our trees. Too hot, too fast, too cold, too fast. So room temperature water from the room right here, the cold frame, it'll be uh, nice and regulated and the same as the roots in there by within a couple degrees. Now, I drill holes in all the tops, or some of the tops of mine. I have a couple of uh, three wide ones here. So if I'm going to go ahead and come in here and water, I can go ahead and get some water in there. Uh, if you have... Uh, smaller holes, you can uh, squeeze a little bit harder and get a little bit finer mist. You get bigger holes, you water a little bit quicker. These have been watered outside, so I don't have to do a whole lot of watering. So we are good to go. And again, we can leave this right here. I've got these down here that we're going to fill. I put pond water in here until the pond freezes over. Pond water is going to be more of the leftover rainwater, the residual from the fish pond uh, with all the... Uh, uh, fish waste and food waste and the things, the bacteria that breaks down in there hopefully is good bacteria and a little bit healthier than my tap water. So until I get more rain buckets full of water and uh, keep those uh, not freezing uh, or bring a bucket inside here and keep the temperature so they don't freeze, I'm going to use the uh, pond water as long as I can. And then in the winter months, we're only going to be watering the plants in here anywhere from one to two weeks. Uh, sometimes maybe a little more, sometimes maybe a little less. Depends upon how dry it is this winter and how well this uh, cold frame is regulating its heat by the sources. The heater still hasn't kicked on, um, so I know that it's warm enough where I want it, somewhere between uh, 32 and 42 degrees or so. Right around 35 to 40 is what I'm going for. And right now, it says actually 46 up here in the bottom one. Says 47. So I'm about 45, 46, 47 degrees in this cold frame and that's that's really good right now and so when I close these doors it won't get much colder it won't get much warmer and if it does too cold of course the heat's gonna kick on so have some water bottles handy it'll make it real nice and easy when you are ready to water so I've got to fill up some more bottles I'm gonna recycle some more here in the coming week so I have more fresh new bottles and we have our first uh, uh, situation ready to go here I do have one more tree I want to bring in to see if it fits hold on I'll be right back okay so I have my spruce trees here in the big old nursery pot. So my spruce forest with the larch in here, I was going to see if it could go in the bottom here as well. But with that tree there and this shelf in the way, it won't work. If I took this shelf out, I could put these trees here and they'd stick up to about here, it looks like, and we'd be okay. But I'd have to find room for those three. I probably could move things around there and make this work. 
This is all going to depend upon how much fits in the cabin cold frame. So I'm going to hold off for now. I'm going to bring this to the cabin cold frame with my large forest that's in a nursery pot like that size, maybe a tad smaller. And we'll have to see if things fit in the uh, cabin cold frame and, uh, with these spruces. So this will be a no for now. Things are looking good in the garage cold frame. My first attempt to put trees in here, it filled up rather quickly. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, trees in bonsai pots. I have the Anderson flat and I have the the wood crate down there with the trident maple. So again, three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve trees in here. If I really squish things in here, I bet you I could f fit twice as many trees. Again, if I uh, get a boot tray that's wider, if I move this and get something thinner here, I can put more trees here and here and here, three more up top three more up top here, maybe three more here, and a couple more in the bottom. So I can likely fit 20 to 24 trees in here. I do have some smaller trees that'll fit in here too, so I can go grab those as well. But we'll do that uh, on phase two. The temperatures tonight are gonna be getting down to the mid to low 20s here, and that's gonna be the case for the next two or three nights. So with this really hard freeze, important to get some of these trees inside. Phase two will happen tomorrow. I have trees that are all Minnesota hardy left. If I did all my work properly today, all the ones that are left are Minnesota hardy, but I'm gonna bring many of them inside the cold frame, again, like the larch forest, the um, spruce forest, and a couple other of my trees that I just wanna make sure that they have a, a really nice place to be. If I recently worked on a tree and did a lot of hard chopping, if I uh, repotted something late in the season and I'm worried about the root growth, I'll put those in the cold frame as well so they can have a nice, consistent climate without worrying about real drastic uh, cold weather should we get it this year in Minnesota. So we're going to go ahead and close this up and then we're going to monitor this over the next couple of days to make sure that everything is turning on when it's supposed to turn on and turning off when it's supposed to turn off. The garage cold frame is well on its way. Can't wait to see what the Govies tell me over the next 24 to 48 hours. Things are closed up and we'll just monitor it and see how things go here in the early stages of temps going down in the basement here in Minnesota. So we're looking at lows into the mid, uh, low to mid 20s for the next several nights. All the trees outside um, are going to be trees that could be outside. We're going to put them in the cabin cold frame in a little bit and we'll just keep checking things out. So that does it. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bones eye and we'll catch you all very soon on the next one.